Hey, I'm Charlie Mabry from the Oro Keefe Museum of Art in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. I run the ceramics program down there. And today, in conjunction with the um, show that they have up at the Max here, um, what's distortion? Deliber deliberately distorted, thank you. Um, I'm gonna do some demos of some of George Orr's techniques on the wheel and do some of that distorting. So right now I'm, I'm just throwing a little piece to do the, the twist that's really common on a lot of his pieces. And so what I wanna do is make one part particularly thin so that it'll distort evenly. Or had a really diverse body of work and even some of the distorted ones were still very, they had a lot of um, a visual appeal to, for a wide audience. And then some of them really did not have wide appeal in their own time and are still kind of controversial now. And I, also, I often hear that, um, especially when people first start on the wheel um, and they mess one up, somebody will say, oh, you made an ore pot. And I always think that's kind of, um, it's funny, but it's also kind of a dig because it, it's like you don't quite appreciate the, um, the technique it took to make these distortions. They, sometimes I think people think they look accidental and the amount of control and technique he had to have to get these really wild distortions and this really using these really thin walls on his pots um, the better you get at ceramics, the better you get at pottery in particular on the wheel, the more impressive his work is. So right now I'm just doing a, I'm getting this clay ready to collapse, hopefully in a controlled way. So I'm weakening it in these ripples here and we'll see. Usually I can see inside whether it's wanting to collapse or not in the right way. Do it just a little more. And this is a really fine clay body, so if I leave some marks on it, it'll, I'll be able to clean it up fairly easily. There we go, now it's wanting to do it. So I'm just gently trying to persuade this clay downward. Twisting it a little bit. To make it collapse into those wrinkles. And straighten up the top. And I've, I've gotten this fairly thin, but we were just talking here about George Orr's pottery. I've, I've had the privilege of being able to touch a few of those pots and pick them up, and they are spooky to hold because they are so light and you just feel like you could just crush them by accident in your hands. And the skill that it takes, th those pieces are not functional at all. They are just art pottery because if you tried to put anything in them and then pick them up by the handle, that, that handle might just snap off. 
And then I could manipulate this a little more later, but not while it's quite so wet. So I'll put this one off to the side. So even though ones like that were, are very distorted, some of the other ones, the, um, the strange little vessels, that some of them are creamers, so they, they could have a function, but some of them are definitely not functional. And you can see how quickly and intuitively he made those pieces. And I can't imagine how many, when he sat down to make a bunch of them, how many, you know, he just intuitively made marks and made folds and they just didn't work and he just probably balled them up and tried again. But he was so prolific that I was, I was just saying, what was your name again? Paula. I was just talking to Paula about how important emotional detachment is with pottery because there's so much loss. So often you're in love with the piece while you're making it. By the time you're done with it, you're really over it. You're not that interested in it anymore. That's not universal, but it is widespread, I think, with pottery. You're in love with the process more than the, the product. So by the time it's out, you're ready to sell it or give it away. And so that, that emotional detachment lets you really push the clay too far. Especially after you make a few thousand pots. You know, you've had so many of them collapse and crack. You're not, you're not worried about that anymore. You're just ready to see how far you can push it this time. So I think on a lot of those little pots that he had, um, he kind of started with this base, it seems to me, of a kind of a bowl shape. The wide bottom, I'm gonna open this up a little more. These forms already look like they're prone to collapse before he starts folding them and manipulating them. And then he makes his rims, and the whole wall, very, very thin, like an eggshell, too, too thin for functional pottery. And especially on the rim, because even if the wall is thin, usually when you're making a pot to use at home or to sell, you, you leave the rim a little bit thicker because that's the weakest part. But his, his are so thin, but it lends itself to the manipulation. So I'm going to get this rim real thin here. Clean this side up a little bit. I'm thinking bringing in one of these sides. Now on the on the, so I'm going to bring this up a little bit. You can see how it likes to fold like that. And then I'm going to bring this wall in. If you, if you look at those creamers, a lot of the times where he does the handle, why don't I take this off the wheel so y'all can see it a little bit better. And put it maybe up here. When he's doing the handle, he brings that sidewall in, presses these together. Is this still the visible? Mm -hmm. 
I gotta say too, when he was when he was making these pieces, you kind of forget about all the steps in the process. And you know, I I've got this nice commercial clay here that somebody else made in an industrial setting that's very consistent. He was having to dig and process all of his own clay, which is a ton of work and not enviable task at all. You know, it's very rare that you can just pull clay right out of the ground and it gives you a very consistent, nice product. Damn, for sure, maybe. Whoop. All part of the plan just to create a little suspense. See, I'm sure he would have done this in like five seconds and then it was on to the next one. I'm amazed this didn't collapse when I picked it up a second ago. This stay, this clay is a little on the stiff side, which is a good thing for making these kind of pots. If this was too soft, it would really collapse. 